Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shukra, and you find me today filming in my home village of Bampton, which is where Downton Abbey was filmed. Now, the more stalwart amongst you will have been watching the introductory films I made in order to um, tell you that we were going to make this series of movies. And you'll know that while I was filming in this beautiful church behind me, I made a basic error. I talked about it as if it were a mere 350 years old. It is, in fact, a great deal older than that. I apologize for the mistake. Um, we will try not to do it again. We learned the lesson. We will make sure we edit ourselves better in future. Now, the wall behind me, this low wall here, marks the boundary of what was a medieval minster enclosure, donated to the village, actually, and the holy man of Bampton, who was a remarkable fellow called Bournewald. He ran a religious community here uh, with the church, the small church made of wood with a thatched roof, and he was later canonized when he died, so he was extremely special to the village. Indeed, we celebrate his life on St. Burnworld's Day on the 21st of December every year to this day. As we come round towards the entrance to the church, you'll recognize this piece of land here. This is where all the carriages and coaches and things were drew up after weddings and funerals of that kind. And some of you who will saw series one of Downton Abbey will recognize this wall where the, during the village fete, all the stalls were lined up against this wall. And of course, behind me over there is the Crawley House, known as Churchgate House. Come with me. So here we are outside the Church of St. Mary the Virgin in Banton. And this extraordinary place, built up, as I said, over the centuries, is the subject of what this film is going to be about. We're about to go into the churchyard, and before we go into the church, I will tell you a little bit about what it was like having the film crew here. It was an open set in Bampton. The carnival films were extremely kind to us, which meant, I, you probably know that filming is a laborious process. It takes ages. There's an awful lot of sitting around, not too much activity, and then suddenly a flurry of things happen. So watching it was amusing, but it got eventually rather boring. Um, and generally speaking, the villagers just went about their normal business, walking their dogs through here and that kind of stuff, until there was a cry of silence, please, and everybody went quiet for a bit. So they were really good to us, and we saw most of what happened here. Let's go into the churchyard and we'll have another look. This ancient churchyard is full of gravestones, beautiful gravestones, most of them illegible. I'm absolutely thrilled to say that we have the organization that is best at researching and clearing up old gravestones started work on this churchyard um, only a matter of weeks ago. We're very excited about this. Um, during the course of the next two years, we will learn all about who it is who is laid to rest here. During the filming of Downton Abbey, however, it was part of the character of the church, but it did actually act as a resting place for the extras and some of the actors who got bored while filming. And we have lots of images of them sitting around on the gravestones all over the church. I mentioned to you that Downton Abbey, the Down Bounton was a, uh, an open set. This is true almost all of the time. They came here in fairly short stints, about four days at a time throughout the year. Um, and usually there was no restriction on where everybody went. However, just twice the set was closed down. The first time was on the arrival of Shirley MacLaine. You'll remember that, at that for that wedding, uh, this uh, wonderful American character arrived. We all thought, I must say, somewhat um, unfairly, that the reason they'd closed the set off with vast screens all the way around this churchyard so nobody could see a thing, was because Hollywood superstardom had arrived in Bampton. 
It was rather unfair, it has to be said, because in fact, of course, what they didn't want us to see, or anybody to see, were the wedding dresses, or indeed what was going on, because the wedding itself was slightly questionable at the time. So that was the only time I remember the set being closed throughout the entire series of six series, except at the very, very last one, when the screens went up again, the churchyard was re-enclosed, I managed to get a little peep through a sort of hole in one of the screens, and the place was covered in false snow. Ooh, very exciting. And that you can understand as well, because they didn't want anybody to know the denouement of series six. Now we'll go in to the church and have a look, and I'll tell you a little bit about its history. So here we are inside the church of St. Mary the Virgin in Bampton. This is the church in which all those Downton Abbey weddings and funerals were held. You'll recognize a lot of it. You'll remember in the early series during the most important wedding between Matthew and Mary, that these pews were filled with a congregation made up very largely of extras from the village itself. At that stage, they were recruiting extras from the village. Later on in the series, the professional extras used to come from miles around as I think the company got a little bit wealthier. This church, as I've already said, has built up over the years. I'm going to take you through the history of this extraordinary building, how it started, where the first building, stone building was, um, and that over the 12th and 13th centuries. We'll start at the bottom end of the aisle, which was basically the entrance to the original church. This Gothic arch was a new addition, originally there were four Romanesque arches, like the oval one you see on the second archway, holding up the square tower above it. We'll start from over there. In the 12th century, this comparatively small stone church was extensively remodeled. The semicircular apse, where the high altar is now, was demolished and a flat easterly wall was built where the stained glass window is now. And two transepts were built, both north and south, making this a much more substantial building. We will visit both those transepts in a minute or two. Each has a chapel on the eastern wall and what we think is probably the reliquary of St. Bernwald is in that chapel over there. Let's go and have a look. So we'll walk around this extraordinary Saxon building and uh, we walk towards the north transept of the um, early 12th century church and we walk in here and up on the, my right high you'll see an original Saxon window. Very ancient glass, very pretty and into the Lady Chapel. Now this is the chapel in which the relic of St. Bernwald was held. That rather wonderful piece of stonework on the east wall over there uh, is what's left of the reliquary. And it is there that the head of Bernwald was located. And people came for miles around to visit. Now, when the Reformation came, of course, relics of this kind were somewhat frowned upon and were taken down. Usually, they were buried close to where they had been. There is a chance that St. Bernwald's head is now buried at the foot of that rather wonderful piece of stone. Um, we'll never know, because I don't suppose anybody will really feel that it's an appropriate thing to do to find out. Now, this chapel has been used for many years now uh, by the Catholics of the village of Bampton uh, to hold their services. It's one of the great things about this church is because we have no Roman Catholic church in the village, um, the two denominations work together. And the Roman Catholic population 
have their services in this chapel often. And in June this year, no, 2016, um, a message was sent from the Pope in Rome to the people of Bantam. And I will read it to you. It hangs here on the outside of this ancient Saxon wall, and it reads, His Holiness Pope Francis unites himself in thanksgiving with the parishioners of St. Mary's Bampton, and imparts the requested apostolic blessing, praying that God may continue to bestow his gifts of faith, hope, and love. It's dated the 16th of June, 2016. Also in the mid-12th century, the tower was raised, and these big Gothic, Gothic arches built to support it, um, and still no spire at this stage, but you can see at the top of this wall the ancient Norman windows, which were part of the raising of the tower at that time. Now I think we'll walk back out into the body of the church and we'll have a look at the nave. So here we are in the middle of the nave, and we can see some of the work done in the 13th century, mid-13th century, where the outside walls of this nave were partially demolished, and this new arrangement of pillars and pointed arches was created, along with the aisles both north and south. It's an extraordinarily clever piece of engineering uh, to be able to do that in the 13th century, and it really is rather beautiful. Later in that century, the tower was raised yet again, and the extremely elegant and beautiful spire added. The tower, square part of the tower, had four very splendid statues placed on either in each corner of the four corners of the square, um, one of which I'm now going to introduce you to. This is him. This is John the Baptist. He was one of the four original statues on the corners of the Great Square Tower. He was carved in around about 1270, along with the other fellows. But he didn't fare so well in a storm on the 25th of January, 1990, when he was blown off the, the roof through the ceiling of the church, scattering masses of debris all over the organ causing considerable damage, but landing almost completely unscathed on the floor of the church. He's very solid, very fine. He has been replaced, of course, up there with a, by uh, a new statue of John the Baptist. Um, but we rather value this fellow, since he came down without actually damaging himself in the slightest. The last thing I'm going to show you is 14th century addition to this church, was this very beautiful window behind me. And you will recognize this, particularly from Downton Abbey, as Lady Mary and her father walk down the aisle towards the altar at that wonderful wedding to Matthew, an experience that I had myself with my daughter about three years ago. It is rather wonderful. The, mirror be the window behind me was made as an exact mirror image of the eastern window, which now has much later stained glass in it, which is perhaps a little bit of a shame because they must have looked very beautiful when they were both plain and lovely like that. There are many more treasures in this church to see. I hope you'll come and visit. Bampton is always very welcoming to visitors and we will look forward to seeing you. Well, we've had a lot of fun filming in St. Mary the Virgin in Bampton, rechristened St. Michael and All Angels in Downton. If you'd like to see our, any more of our programs, please visit our website on thecotswoldexplorer.co.uk. You can find us, of course, on Facebook um, or Twitter at Cotswold Explore. We'll see you next month when we're going to be looking again at another Bampton building used in the filming of Bampton. Uh, on this occasion, the old grammar school. We look forward to seeing you then. <laughs>